Welcome back. I am Benjamin Ryder with Cooperative Communications, and I'm speaking with Terry Snow with CCAT. So what's CCAT? CCAT is uh, the acronym for the Calgary Council for Advanced Technology. Okay. And that we sounds... are celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. Okay, so uh, why, what, like, what made CCAT form 30 years ago? What was the need? CCAT was formed to bridge the gap between the business and tech community. So we provide um, a forum for networking um, individuals from industry, business, academia, government to come together, share ideas, and to help accelerate the commercialization process. So people that normally wouldn't meet would now meet at these networking events. So they would be uh, educational and they would share ideas help one another, and uh, we've been doing that for 30 years. We used to put on about eight events a year. Now we put on four to five larger events per year. We cover um, four pillars, four main pillars. So that would be life sciences, energy, environment, and um, ICT in general. So um, would it be appropriate to say that you have clients or members? We have, we have a membership. So oh. our membership spans uh, over 1,500 across uh, Calgary and area. Oh, so there's 1,500 individuals. Yeah, okay. who subscribe to our newsletter, who attend our events, who follow us uh, through social media. And we have a board of um, 12 uh, professional individuals who cover different chairs. So we have a marketing chair, IT committee chair, um, volunteers, membership. We have um, some executives, uh, and we're always looking for volunteers. So it's a great opportunity to get ingrained in the community, to get engaged with people that you wouldn't normally meet from, say, Innovate Calgary, from TR Tech, from different associations, Startup Calgary. Um, we have a sponsorship from Innovate Calgary, so we all work pretty close together. And um, because of that, obviously, Calgary is a huge amount of uh, tech startups that come out of the city. So, I mean, I, I've been chatting with quite a few people over the last couple of days, and, uh, you know, the impression I'm starting to get is that uh, the tech industry that we have in Alberta is like a hidden gem. I mean, it is it is advanced, it is uh, up to date, uh, but not a lot of people know about it. Mm -hmm. right? Can you I comment agree. on that? Yes, and, and I think primarily because in Western Canada, Calgary, Alberta specifically, we're known as the oil and gas place to be, right? So what a lot of people don't know is the um, amount of tech startups that do come out of uh, Alberta, just as many, uh, if not more, than uh, Toronto is what I've heard. Now, hmm. I don't have the exact numbers on that, but a lot of it is oil and gas uh, service products. So how can we um, extract more, um, do more with less? Um, when you talk about big data, how do we capture that big data? How do we get it from the remote site back to head office? How do we use that data intelligently? So there are um, a large number of tech startups that are feeding the oil and gas industry. So what's some of the issues with a tech startup? I mean, I mean, why would they need the support of an organization like CCAT? Uh, probably the biggest challenge is uh, the engagement side. So how, if you have an idea, how do you meet the right, um, if you're looking for startup capital, how do you meet the right people? How do you know what channels to go through? So, that, I mean, since CCAT started 30 years ago, there now are several several other avenues. So, for example, you can go to TR Tech. You can go to Innovate Calgary, Startup Calgary. There's, there's Tech Rev. There's, you know, Beakerhead just started. There's so many associations out there that are now becoming very specific. So CCAT was more of um, a general forum where you could come and network and meet people who were involved in different aspects of the tech industry. So whether it was funding, whether it was government, whether, you know, policy, um, introduce you on the business side. So, you know, as if you're looking for partners uh, to pilot your, um, your business, or if you need um, uh, capital or you need uh, some expertise on how to build a product a certain way. So I think what we provided was um, the more general audience uh, opportunities for networking. And then from there, now we have more specific associations. So we're looking at in our 30th year, well, how does CCAT evolve? So now we're, we're looking at, uh, we just applied actually for a grant through uh, Status of Women for a $300,000 grant to advance women in technology. Hmm. So now we want to take what we've learned and develop a program to help women who have a tech background move up in uh, existing uh, companies. 
Cool. So CCAT's not the only thing you do, though. I mean, that's not, uh, you know, you, you do other things. Can you talk about some of the other work that you do? Uh, well, this morning I facilitated a panel, the oil and gas panel. So we had um, uh, Redline Communications talking about the digital oil field. We had uh, ZI talking about uh, monitoring systems at the wellhead. And uh, we had Motorola Solutions talking about security for the end devices and uh, monitoring of uh, wireless networks. So my other um, interest is uh, remote communications. So I work for a company called Brigstar Communications. So we do remote communications out to uh, rigs, camps, and plants. Mm -hmm. And it's generally very remote sites. So we look at, uh, we're an internet service provider. So the broadband shot, how can we backhaul to the nearest POP, Supernet, for example. Uh, we work with all the major telcos. So whether it's um, a company needs a 10 meg to 100 meg. Uh, Redline, we work with them in the capacity of the radios that they deploy out in the field for a digital oil field. So you have a, a mesh network. And um, then we look at the security solutions the customers need out there. And that's, um, that's my other interest is uh, on the remote communication side. So I kind of marry that with CCAD in that um, we have partnered with some um, entrepreneurs who have come out of Innovate Calgary, who have come through CCAT, who have new and exciting technologies, and we help them get it out to the marketplace through are there, Rigstar. Are there applications uh, for this um, outside of just the oil and gas? I mean, because, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can never have enough infrastructure. I mean, you know, to be able to be in the middle of nowhere and to, you know, call your mom, I mean, that, that's... That never happened 20 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I would think that there's a lot more um, that can be applied um, than just oil and gas field. Can yep. you maybe talk a little bit about that? It's definitely applicable to any company that has a remote site. So mining is another big one, manufacturing. Um, we've picked a niche market. Our customers generally have been on rigs. It's been drilling and completions. But uh, any, any company with a remote site would uh, want that remote access. And if you look at the, the students or the, I'll say the, the generation Y, the under 30 that are coming into the marketplace today, they expect it. Yeah. They expect to bring their own device. They expect to have internet. They expect to be able to use Skype, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, any social media. And they, they don't expect, it should be whether you're in the middle of nowhere or you're home, they want the same access. So, I mean, can the same um, technology apply to settlements? I mean, because, you know, we don't all just live in big cities. I mean, we have settlements that uh, are not very numerous and mm -hmm. are very remote. Um, I mean, is this technology being applied for them? Yes. Well, if you look at Parkland community, mm -hmm. they have what's called an intelligent community. Can you talk about that? So Parkland has, uh, and they have set up their own um, topology of towers mm -hmm. and a network that they then turn around and lease to... Um, not the end users. Well, some of them are the end users, but also the companies that are reselling. So they've built the infrastructure ahead of time, sort of that if we build it, they will come sort of concept, right? Which is the first in Canada. Really? And it's, um, they've gotten a lot, of, um, a lot of media attention because of it. So are you it, well aware of that? Like, are you involved with that at all? Uh, from a knowledge perspective, uh, I'm aware of it. I've met with Parkland, and from a Rigstar perspective, we um, we are looking at working with them on some projects and leasing some space from them, as well as um, helping them with uh, monitoring the towers. So they have 18 towers right now, and that's going to grow. So is that uh, something that, um, in your personal opinion, you, you would recommend uh, other communities to really look at? Because, I mean, this is the first of its kind. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, if communities can really start to own their infrastructure, I mean, this is infrastructure that's paying back. I mean, this isn't, yeah. this isn't a money hole. This is, you know, investment, return, ongoing return. So should communities be looking at uh, Parkland as the future of... You know, infrastructure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, they've had publicity as far as, um, I believe, Germany. Um, they've had people come from all over the world to look at their infrastructure. So, as you know, there's a lot of rural communities that do have um, problems with getting internet access, getting cost-effective internet access, having choice of providers. So this is definitely a model that a lot of, um, a lot of municipalities are looking at uh, adopting and rolling out for sure. Excellent. So 
I think we're going to go to break here in a bit. Um, but uh, I do want to thank you for the interview. Is there anything that, uh, from this event being Best of Analytics, I mean, like, what are you most excited about for what this event means? Not necessarily just the information that you saw here, but mm -hmm. what this event means for the general public. I think it's uh, more of an awareness to the, not just the challenges of big data, but the evolving trends of that data being doubled, tripled, tenfold, and how fast uh, that is uh, that trend is evolving. Uh, the issues that are going to be surrounding it, the implications, and then I think the networking opportunity to meet companies of like mind where the synergies are and what they're doing, how they're dealing with those challenges, and then collaborating with them. So this is a great opportunity for companies to start um, collaborating with, with like-minded partners and coming together for the benefit of their clients for you know the best overall solution, I think. All right. Well, thank you very much for chatting with us. Thank you. All right. Join the conversation next year as more cities become data-driven, become a community partner. Contact us at info at abctech.ca.